Welcome to another episode of the Double J Talk Show. I'm Jay Lowe. And I'm Jazzy J. And I'm John, back again. He's back again. Yes. <laughs> we have another guest, and that's John. John's back again. I'm, I swear, if I'm going to be like the day to be able to the It's Always Sunny cast, it's going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about some side hustles. In all seriousness, yes, John's back, and we're going to be talking about side hustles. Today. Because we're a little bit starved for cash. <laughs> yes. So, unfortunately, we're not making money off this podcast yet. Not yet. Exactly. Not, not yet. yet. But we could be, with your support. Keyword, yet. Go check out our Patreon. <laughs> we don't have a Patreon if yet. There's, if there's any sponsors listening, even though there's probably not any sponsors, please yeah. sponsor us. Raid Shadow Legends, we're looking at you. <laughs> With over right. 1 million players. But yes, so we're all employed uh, for periods of time during the year. So, not me. most of us. <laughs> <laughs> during periods of time, uh, and also have other side things that we do. So, today. This is going to be the episode to talk about that. And we're going to kind of do this the roundtable style. So, Jacob, let's start with you. Wait, he has something to start with? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get some side I, let's, I, uh, let's I came up with the idea. All right, yeah. so, um, yeah, so during Joke. the summer, I would always, uh, I asked my neighbors if, um, if they need their, 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 uh, their lawns mowed. And one neighbor said yes, and that was an extra $25 a week. And uh, since, um, living at home, I don't really have any real expenses. So I just save up, save it up. Hmm, nice, 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 nice. And I also, uh, I also just sold off some stuff on eBay just for extra, just uh, for some extra cash. I sold a couple of video games actually. That's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Yeah. Obviously, my full time job is being a student because I care about my education. Well, that's all I mean, we're all, we're all students here. Exactly. <laughs> we're all students here. But uh, on the weekends, I work at this upscale restaurant called the Aberdeen Barn in Norfolk, Virginia, as a busser, and it it's a pretty ni- it's a nice place. It pays fairly well. And it allows me to get things I want to explore, John, but wouldn't have the money otherwise to do. Like, with that, I got, like, a ukulele, because I wanted to at an impulse. <laughs> oh, yeah, I also got a bass ukulele, because uh, I traded um, my electric ukulele for an acoustic one, which is also electric, but it's kind of... Uh, <laughs> it's less frets, but it's more acoustic, of uh, like, a sound. Yeah, I gotcha. We got you. All right, so I guess now we'll talk about some of my side hustles. Some. I have a lot <laughs> of side hustles. I, I do quite a bit. Um, some volunteer work. I do quite a bit of volunteer work. I'll, I can get into that later, but I'll start with my paid work. So over the summer, I work in IT uh, as a, a technician for my high school. Uh, and I also help I also help on the side with their live streams and stuff during the school year as well. So that's one part of my side hustle. I also do DJing. And that's another part of my side hustle where I make money. And I also work for a wrestling media company uh, called the Garden State Edge Wrestling. And we also, and I help them record podcasts and do uh, video editing and live streams for that. And that's another one of my side hustles. So, and then also I'm looking to start working at my college very soon too in IT. So, you know, I got quite a few side hustles. Basically, the Steve Jobs of IT. (laughs) Basically, yeah, I, I I basically jump around. And you have experience, and you're gonna have a degree, so that's gonna be really, oh, you're gonna be really yeah. qualified. For the yeah, job. it's gonna be very, very interesting. Oh yeah. So what else is going? On? So let's see. Do, do we want to talk about volunteer stuff we do? Um, first off, um, before we started this uh, episode, we had a very intense discussion because Jacob here uh uh ha- had trouble understanding what a side hustle was. He uh, said that because. Here's the thing. A side hustle implies that you have a main hustle, which means you have a main way of getting money. Okay. So our main hustle, <laughs> I think all of our main hustles, what is our main hustles, Jacob? Uh, well, for me, it was technically mowing the lawn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, that is the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess, well, our main hustles are school. That's kind of our main thing. School is my main hustle. Thing. Um, so our side hustles are basically our jobs that we have on the side. It, yeah, but because we're students, I guess a uh, side hustle would be technically our primary method of acquiring income. Yes, yes. except we're all, we also still live with all of us live with our parents as far as we know. Yeah. Uh, you know, as of today. Like, I don't know really what to call it, but like, if your parents are helping pay most of your student- Dependent. Uh, yeah, like, but like, I- could you consider that a main hustle? Because, like, my parents, uh, like, they basically agree with me to basically subsidize my education 
in return for getting good grades, right? Like, so technically, by getting good grades, I'm getting paid equivalent to my tuition and room and board and stuff like that. So yeah. would that really be considered the main hustle there? Yeah, that would. Who knows? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. It's, it's very roundabout, but I guess it works. Just not hard cash in the end. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's basically our side yeah. hustles in a oh, nutshell. I also forgot to mention, I also did some shows for the Jazz and Sun for my high school uh, for some of the restaurants in the Peabrick area, and we did also get paid for uh, from the restaurant owners. That's a gig. That's not a hustle. Oh yeah. Hey, that's still a hustle. Hey, it counts. So if we're if we're getting into that, I do I do also DJ. So I am a DJ for both parties around where I am in, in New Jersey and PA. I do a lot of parties. I'm also a radio DJ. Nice. Believe it or not. Squishy, squishy. The radio DJ is volunteer for my school. Basically, the, the DJ pro- Collard, but a smarter variation. I guess. Don't, don't worry, DJ. We still love you. <laughs> yeah um but yeah basically that's another one of my thing the, the uh, dj thing is mostly uh you know side hustle because it's i get it's gigs i haven't really had as many gigs this year i think last year with just djing i made about fourteen hundred dollars it's an it's comfy it's better than zero <laughs> it's, 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 a com- it's a comfy amount because i do a lot, usually my summers i usually do quite a bit i did a yeah. lot of graduation parties last year a lot i'd of say the real question is how much did you have to pay in capital to start with so Cause like the speakers and equipment must be pretty expensive so my speakers were 700 and my board i would say was well my laptop i just used my laptop that i have so that i don't count into that my board i and the cables i would say add another five six hundred so the question is do you make back what you put into the investment I, from when i started i have made back what i put into the investment yes and that is what is called a good investment if you can make it back and then some that's good I, but if you break even like i feel like that's understated like in terms of investments Breaking even is, like, optimal. Yes. If yeah. you're not, like, using it as your main method of income. If it's your main method of income, then you're not making any money. But yeah. if it's, like, an investment that you're doing for fun, and you end up breaking even, that's, like, a net positive. You have you have fun, and you don't really spend any money on it. Yeah. I've broken even on my DJing gig. Yeah. Definitely. And then, if we're talking... Do we want to talk about, pra- I guess, past hustles? Hmm? I mean, that was my past hustles. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess if we want to go into past hustles, some of those were my current hustles. So yeah. I, I, I gave a mix at the beginning, but another hustle I did was the live streaming for my high school, which I started. Um, yeah, I did. I was in the band and debate, so like I didn't really have that much time for all the side hustles. Yeah, but um, we did a lot of the live streaming, and that was a big part of my life for quite a bit of time it's why yeah. literally everyone in the main like uh main street area knows him by name and will get him extra stuff because his name is jared climbs exactly everywhere i go everywhere i go with jared he's, everyone just like it's like hey jared hey jared hey jared, hey, jared. every every five seconds yes they these guys have been around with me for a while and yeah. i do have a tendency Especially with some of the local businesses that like to broadcast the sports at or, or the live that the live streams that I do at the at their uh, places of business like to thank me quite a bit. Yeah, I, I would also like to mention that this is a sh- very, very, very dramatic shift from uh, Jared's popularity from when he started Scouts. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> uh, basically, when we started Scouts. Uh, I think Jared, I think it's best to say that you're still trying to find your niche. Yeah, I like, guess. Like, you weren't sure where you wanted to be, but you knew that, but, like, you knew your end goal, right? Yes. But, like, you didn't know how to get there, so basically what Jared uh, tried to do was try to basically just throw around a bunch of random trendy buzzwords and try basically, like, oh, yeah, I support this, therefore I'm popular. He, in the end, he decided to make our troop, like, New Scout Patrol name, the Harlem Shakers. <laughs> we were the laughing stock. For three years. Yes, yes, I did suggest that. That was that was before I joined. That was before ja- that was before Jacob's time yeah. with the troop, and I did suggest that name. It was traumatic. It was very traumatic, and we don't speak of it ever again. However, I I will recount another experience for Jared. When Jared first entered the troop, we were doing introductions with like our names, like what we like. Jared decided to say his full name and with a quite of a flair. And because we had another Jared in the troop already, he got the moniker of Fancy Jared. <laughs> or was that because I came from a... Actually, I think there's two reasons why that came. First no, one was because of that. Call him Fancy Jared. 
And the second, <laughs> and the second reason that came up to a thing is because I had a choir performance in elementary school, and I came from the choir performance to the tr- oh yeah, you're spiffy in a tuxedo. <laughs> you're spiffy. I forgot. <laughs> and there you go. And then that just automatically confirmed yeah. Fancy Jared. And my name was Fancy Jared for <laughs> until quite we, a while. Yeah, until basically the. Basically, our troop was, we were the second year of scouts as a new troop, and we were the second year of scouts. So basically, once that first year started losing interest and, like, going their own ways, Jared started picking up the slack by literally taking over almost every executive function. So he was, so he's basically the de facto leader of the troop, even though he didn't hold a senior position until he became ASPL, like, uh, like, when you were 15? Yeah, about 15. And then I... Please yeah. note, he joined the troop when he was 11. <laughs> yeah. I was webmaster since, I think, 12, 13. I yeah. became webmaster. Like, the first year webmaster was a bit rocky because it was uh, both a transition to electronic. Yeah. As well as just, you were young, you didn't have that much credibility behind you. Yeah, a lot of it was, you know... A, a lot of it was, I didn't have much cred- credibility yet. And I didn't have much, uh, you know, when we weren't really much of an online presence. We had a troop website, but they didn't really use it. It to be fair, it's still not really used. It's still not really used to the point of... We, well, yes and no. It is used for the registration and the tracking system that's on it for the scout reference. So it is used. Marketing-wise, I'm not too sure. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's used as a tool, but not as a main function. Exactly. Which is what you try to make it be. Which was what we tried to make it Like, be. for example, before we had to switch to an online format... Our sign-up method was, like, basically, here's interesting things that we're going to do in the future. Put your name on this list in order to sign up for it. And it was very effective because, like, you're like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. I'm going to sign up now. But basically what Jared did, which I still disagree with, was he made it all electronic. So if you wanted to, you had to go online, log in, find it, and then say, oh, yeah, I want to go here. And that that was too many steps. I feel like that that heavily, that change dramatically lost enthusiasm and interest within troop activities. Yeah. yeah. So for a while, what I actually ended up doing was I actually ended up bringing my laptop to all the meetings and we they would announce it and then they would say, either sign up online or go see Jared to sign up. Yeah, I honestly feel like the flyer method was still way more effective. I For some, yes. For some, no. When we first started, it was a rocky start. For no, because like, even if you say you want to do it, it's very different. Compared to the commitment, you have to do it by physically writing it down. Yeah. I feel like that puts innate value in it because you're taking the time to physically write your name down. That lets you be more committed and actually follow through with what you say you want to do. Yeah, I, I mean, I see it. I do see it. And definitely. But that is in the past. <laughs> that, that was the past. And a lot of the thing was the troop leaders. When I first got elected the webmaster, the troop leaders wanted to go that method. They bought the program and said, here's the program. Have fun. True. And they gave me the list of events from the Patrol Leaders Council. I basically said, all right, have fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have fun. That, that, that's totally not an undue burden on to a 12-year-old kid. <laughs> it's all good. No worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was fun. Uh, so we got the web... Actually, that was that's another one of my side hustles was the webmaster thing. And I still actively work with that with Chris and uh, them. So we all, we all do the webmaster stuff. And um, basically... Uh, we monitor the site, and then we basically transition from just event tracking to now rank requirement tracking and things like that all at once. Yeah, that actually, like, the rank requirement, like, just having it as an online database, I feel like that should have been the primary usage of the online system to start with. Because, like, I know that I lose, I've, I lost my book at one time, my scout book. So, like, having that online tracking would have made it so much easier compared to, like, pure on paper. That, I feel like, yeah. sh- like, it was an extreme improvement to have that online. But yeah. the sign-up's not much, but again, in the past. Yeah, the sign-up, I, I, I personally like the sign-up idea, especially with the parents. The idea, yes, but the execution, I felt like it never practically made sense. Yeah, I get, I get it. You know, it is the past, you, you know. It's hindsight, yeah. It, it's hindsight, and then, like I said, because we were used to the paper pencil method. Yeah. The grade years after us, when we initiated the Scout ma- Manager system, which is, I yeah. think, like, around yeah, yeah, like, two grades under. I get that, so too, yeah. Not, the fu- not uh, Michael's grade, but yeah. the grade under, they were the they were all on Scout Manager. They True. never experienced the 
so they all kind of, you know. Yeah, but the thing was, we were very top heavy, and we still are. So like, we needed those older scouts to actually sign up. So I feel like we should have done a dual uh, sign up way. Yeah, I I agree that that would have been a good idea. You know, just to have a dual sign up initiative. Like I said, I did my best with the whole. Exactly. Like again, line. not blaming you, but yeah. like it's just like. The, I'm basically just airing out my beef with that system from when I was, like, 12. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so enough about me. Jacob, back yes. to you. Yes, What is another side hustle that goes on? Actually, you know what? Let's talk about Jacob's scout side hustle. Scout side hustle? Which one? Leadership positions you've held. Uh, I've held the scribe in the patrol leader position, but scribe's kind of more... Yeah, more let's, ta- yeah let's talk about scribe. Uh, if you have ever met Jacob Lau, uh, one thing that you know about him is that he's extremely messy in his note-taking. His handwriting also, and really, his organization oh, yeah. is quite messy. Right, I, Jacob? I, 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 took, I took all my notes online. Yeah. And I'm very However, concerned. the thing that made Jacob such a good scribe was that he actually showed up to meetings and he actually wrote down the topics. Yeah. yeah. And because he actually did that, he did his job. And he yeah. did it consistently enough for him to be depended on to do it, which is, like... A good quality. Yeah, if you, like, it's counter to what you think that Jacob's best position would be, like, on first glance. Yeah. But it ended up... English. Yeah, but ended up fitting quite well in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think, honestly, Jacob, you you and Webmaster, I think you were the best Webmaster there was. I, there I never were, did Webmaster. Our, our not Webmaster, Webmaster. Describe. Oh, <laughs> it's, long, it's been a long night. It's been a long night. Everyone knows but please note, my brother is still next to me, and he claimed that he was the best webmaster. He's in the because, background. Uh, he was basically the person who followed after Jared For was webmaster. Time. When I was promoted. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty great. Wait, you were met webmaster, Marcus? Oh, yeah, I was. Once he was, yeah. Okay. When he was promoted. Yeah, please note that uh, you guys might not be able to hear Marcus because he's far away from the mic, and therefore, like, we're basically trying to repeat it in a way. But if you don't hear anything... Uh, blame my brother for not being close enough to the mic. Working. He's working. He is working, which is why like we aren't making him sit I here. I haven't crashed it. Yeah, but I didn't either. So <laughs> <laughs> he didn't crash it. Yeah, Mark just said that basically he's great because he didn't crash the website, which it never crashed. It was very reliable, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I didn't break it. So. <laughs> he didn't break it is what he said. Which is good. Of course. All right, so uh, we did mean scribe. So, Jared, you want to elaborate? That? Yes, Jacob. Yeah. I think you were the best scribe. We did have some scribes in the past and over the past that would literally write down everyone's name who was at the meeting, and then that was it. That's what you mean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh wait, That's we're easy. having a meeting. This fruit meetings every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like they like, basically they write. Like, they don't write anything down after the or first minute. Here's my favorite. We planned events. There we go. Wow. <laughs> we planned events. Plan review. <laughs> like, no derp. And I'm like, okay, so where are the events? Oh, I forget. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh uh, yeah, uh, no. Did you write them down? Yeah, I feel, I feel like a way to actually do is to actually, like, like, you know how we explained what the job was before they oh. wanted to take it? Yeah. I feel like we should have explained to them again, like, the first main meeting. Yeah, we definitely should have explained it. And we used to do six-month positions instead of, uh... Year. Year positions. But that's because... The only reason why it is just because, like, efficiency. Efficient. Like, like, transition was too rough, and we were kids. And to allow the other scouts to, um, hold up the positions for the rank requirements. That six, yes. months, six months was Ooh. actually done that first. That, that. Uh, okay, so we talked about the six-month position change. But, like I said, I think going to the 12 month, or the 12 month or the full year, was a good move just because of the transition time. Because, you know, get especially with, like, Webmaster and Scribe and stuff, you know, it's... Yeah, for those nine scouts, uh, for, uh, after you hit first class, which is, like, the middle point in terms of rank numbers, um, there are long-term requirements for the star, life, and eagle rank, where in order to fulfill one of the requirements that you need to rank up... You need to hold a leadership position within the troop for four or six months, depending on the rank. So, what we originally had planned was that basically 
every six months we change it up so we can maximize people who get leadership positions. Yeah. It, exactly. Um, so we changed it up a little bit, and now it's it's more efficient. And they're still on the year system. Actually, believe it or not, they don't have as many positions as we have active. We have the main one. So in a scout troop, I guess the main positions are senior patrol leader, which is the top assistant p- senior patrol leader. Which can be a top if the senior patrol leader never shows up. That is true. <laughs> um, um, patrol leaders, which each patrol... It scouts this troop is basically split into patrols where basically it's usually a group of five or six plus the patrol leader and the patrol leaders over oversee their specific patrol and then patrols are grouped together Pretty much a more of that booster and yeah i i'd say it's bas- basically the patrol leader's job is to represent the patrol like what they generally want as well as to basically like uh represent them when it comes to like troop posi- like yeah. decisions yes and then there's also the other staff positions I call them on the patrol leaders council, which is the scribe, which is the people that take person that takes the notes. Hey, the troop guide, which is the one that oversees the new scout patrol, who kind of over and oversees the instructional part of the troop, and the webmaster, who oversees the website and all the digital operations of the troop. Like, uh, like since I'm no longer within the troop, I feel like I can air my grievances against both of these positions. I feel like that these positions weren't really fulfilled. Like, the troop guide, like, their job was to lead the new scouts. I did that. I was not the troop guide. I was the ASPL. You certain never showed up. <laughs> I, no, I showed up at the end, uh, which is what I'm talking about. Certain, when I was SPL, yeah, ASPL. Yeah, I get, I get some of that. I get some of that. Like, here's my thing with the positions. If you were elected to a position, you should have been in the position... And you should have held the position and been responsible for the position. Like, what I like, suggested when, you, like, like during one of my first, I like, blush. patrol leader meetings was to only grant, like, satisfy the requirement if they did their job. That is true. Like, I feel like that would have Which, led to an actually effective, like, position because, like, they would have to work for it. Which I feel like would have been a lot better yes. than before. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely would have worked better. And, you know, there are some things I know they've improved on. Like, the positions are now you have to fill it. Like, you have to do... Th- that's why we got rid yeah, of... Yeah, like... That's why a lot of those positions were abolished, believe it or not. Like, and that makes sense. Because, like, for example, like, Historian, they didn't do anything. It was basically, like, a position where you just held it. What is... What is Historian? Historian's job is basically to just, like, record what the troop does. Uh, and basically, like, catalog it for later. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's the, the job of the historian, I guess. Um, you know, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's the job of the historian. And but it I'm wasn't gonna... ever done because that because the webmaster ended up doing it, or the scoutmaster ended up doing it in order to inform the parents of what was happening. Exactly. We basically had to redo a lot of the positions and basically rename the quartermaster we actually made made into a position that they're the ones that are now in charge of the trailer so that is the quartermaster's job yep they have the trailer responsibility and the we used to have a position for, called librarian who'd oversee the filing cabinets in the in the thing yeah now, that's, <laughs> now that falls under the umbrella of the quartermaster now then we get to like the positions like chaplain's aide who does the prayers they basically did their job. Yeah. Like, the, like it's a ceremonious job. Cer- ceremonious it, yeah. job, yeah. It's not really a leadership, though. Exactly. Which is, like, I have a quandary with that, but good. it... Yeah, no, but, like, it still satisfies the leadership requirement, which is I, why I have personally have an issue with it. Yeah, yeah. some of them might, and, like, Bugler and stuff, well, but... Think yeah. about this way. If you live in the South, you might be a chaplain more. You know? Okay. What Mark just said was, basically, if you're in the South, you might uh, fulfill more of a role as chaplain's aide than we do in New Jersey. Which, like, yeah, that makes sense, but, like, I feel like it's just an outdated role at this point. Yeah. Like, uh, mind if I talk about something from my Eagle Board of Review? Uh, I guess, sure. just, yeah. yeah. You, you know, just don't... Yeah, do. yeah, basically, after they said, okay, yeah, we're gonna let your Eagle stuff go through to the National Council, uh, they asked me a question on, basically, the idea of a diversity merit badge that would be Eagle required. Actually... I would be supportive of that. I am not actually, and here's why: if we, if it was an eagle required merit badge, those who stand the most to learn from it will just take it at the very end and just like ignore the actual merits behind it, and like they'll just do it to do it. I feel what well, I think it should be is a star, 
it should be a requirement for the star rank because those who have star rank are still young enough to be truly influenced by like the diversity as well because of the innately complex topic that uh diversity and inclusion is because of, like in society it can't be done like if you're like 10 or 11 years old you have to be older for that mm -hmm. okay. so i so i am against it being a merit badge because those who want to do it won't learn from it because let's take it at the very end as the last merit badge and not learn anything from it but if it's a star requirement then they'll have to learn from it and there's still time where they have lessons from it into later ranks which means that they benefit after the requirement is satisfied right the uh, argument is there is versus you're going to have a lot of times where you have like a 12 year old who has star rank that's a very common hmm? Thing. I mean, people well, get star rank fairly quickly. Yeah, so, I mean, but it's yeah, issue. but still not ten. It's still not ten year old. Guess start with Marcus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So we went. We started with side hustles, and we ended with troop. And we, and I guess, we ended with troop uh, talking, talking, and troop, troop positions, troop positions, and troop uh, ideology. Hmm. I think this is fun. Yeah. And that just just about wraps up the episode here on the Double J Talk Show. Uh, keep following us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at the Double J Talk Show to stay up to date. Uh, we have a few episodes coming up that are going to be very fun and exciting. We have our holiday episodes, which we're going to have an episode released on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, tentative so far, and we'll also have an episode with Saturday, so that'll be our holiday special and our New Year's special. Let's just leave it at We have a, quite a bit of episodes coming up, so you'll want to listen to us on Anchor, Breaker, Spotify, YouTube. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Audible, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, Apple, all your podcast platforms. So thank you once again for listening. And